Hi, I'm Mark here with the Exiles. I hope you're safe and well. So in this video, I want to get into some detail. I want to get into some detail around the first and second play of Giocco Largo, okay? Our wide and loose plays uh, in the Spado Du Imani, so sorting two hats, okay? Uh, funnily enough, someone mentioned the other day about the lockdown stick. Well, I have lockdown sticks again, okay? And the other thing about lockdown is there's cars driving down my lockdown field, um, and because I don't have much time today, I'm not going to pause the video as they drive past, so I'm gonna apologize in advance for the cars that use this road as a little racetrack on a Sunday. So I've put these sticks together because um, we really need to see what's going on uh, with, with points and angles and cutting lines and stuff. So, you know, I think it's quite inventive. Um, this video is going to be about detail. We've done videos in the past around Jaco Lago, uh, those two plays in the Jaco Lago section. Um, but the same sort of questions, same sort of comments come up um, and I felt like doing some detail today. So uh, first of all, let's quickly describe what we're seeing, okay? So the image you have on your screen is from the Getty, uh, Getty manuscript. And what we can see uh, initially is that um, a, a cut has been sent in from the opponent and um, I've made a cover, a covering type action, okay? Um, and I keep the left foot forward because we've been at Largo. So we've started either just the edge of distance or just outside of distance. My opponent's right foot has come forward because they are stepping to attack me, okay? And if the distance was such that that doesn't happen, then we're into different parts of the system, different parts of the fight, okay? So that's what's happened. They've sent a cut from their right shoulder to my left shoulder, okay? And they've stepped to do it, as I've said, okay? Which has slowed their cutting action down, give me time to react to it. I have made a cover. Now, I could have made this cover from lots of different positions, okay? Uh, I am I tend to favor low posture, I'm a low, poster kind of guy um, but you know a lot of people would have found it in a guard or in full posture de donna doesn't really matter how we find the cover doesn't really matter where we come from doesn't really matter some clubs will find that incoming fendente and covering it they will find it with that sort of posture frontale type position that's perfectly acceptable no problem okay uh, some club, club cubs will find it a little bit lower in posture uh, breve uh, that's not a problem either except you're cutting down a lot on distance okay and we'll talk about where the weapons are crossing and all the rest of it in a second so um the main thing is that i've thrown up a cover Sometimes when you're treating things very clean in the training hall, you know, you're resetting yourself. Fucking hell, an aeroplane going past now. I'm not going to pause for that either. Um, you know, in the training hall uh, where it's very clean and you're kind of resetting and you're going for the technique and you're stopping and resetting, you can lose sight of the fact that actually that's not really how this stuff works. It might be initially how the attack happens, but fights unfold in lots of different ways, okay? And you don't cleanly reset yourself every time. The point I'm trying to make is this isn't always going to be a very clean setup. Okay, they may have attacked on one side, turned the cut into another as they've dropped a bit of distance back, whatever. Okay, the main thing is that you're finding the cover. Um, how I tend to find this cover is that I'll find it with a kind of counter cut action. Okay, so I will wait just outside of distance. I want my opponent to step, and as they step with that pendente, I will counter cut into it. So if I'm high, I will cut with the sole intention of that cut becoming effectively a cover, okay? You can also commonly find this type of covering action if you're both cutting at each other, okay? So I'm waiting, and my intention is not to step, my opponent is stepping with their cut, I might also have, you know, watched them come just into distance and throw my own cut out as well, okay? And if that happens, we're still gonna find the cover. So hopefully I've stressed that point enough. You find it however you find it. There's a lot of questions around where the weapons actually meet, okay? In the manuscript, they're not quite punta to punta, but they're not quite mezza to mezza. What I mean is they're not quite meeting on the tip like this, okay? Uh, on the very end of the weapon, but they're not quite meeting on the mezza either, okay? Mezza being middle of the weapon. Um, where I often say that this action, this uh, play, these plays are distance driven, what I really mean by that, and I'll go on to explain why, since this video is about detail, but what I really mean by that is, if you throw a fairly typical cut, a sort of cut from the right shoulder, okay, the evolution of that cut is that it will reach maximum extension and then come back towards the body. 
okay? Unless the person is cutting like this or whatever, but I'm talking about a typical type of cutting action, all right? If I'm throwing up a cover and I'm meeting it right on the end, on the, on the punter, okay? Their cut is gonna be the same, whether or not I'm here or a little bit closer, okay? So where we meet on the weapon, is driven by distance. So if I'm really far away and they're cutting and they're just close enough to land that and I throw up a cover, then we are going to meet, and I haven't talked about the feet yet, I'm trying to keep them static, I'll come on to that in a second. I'm gonna meet down on the punter, okay? If I'm a little bit closer, they throw in that typical cut and I throw up a cover, I'm gonna meet on the mezzo, okay? And if we've done an exchange or whatever and they throw in a cut and I'm really close, I'm gonna find it on the tutor down on the strong of the weapon which gives me access to different parts of the system okay if I'm close enough to cover here I'm close enough to start reaching over and I'm close enough to start actioning my stretto plays if we've both uh, uh, sorry cut and stepped well then I'm, again, I'm going to meet on the Metza or down on my strong on their Metza and I've got access to plays. Yeah, I've got access to all of those plays. So when I say it's distance driven, that's what I mean. Okay. Now, anybody that's practiced these plays under a lot of pressure testing at speed with power and with different setups will know that it's actually really hard to maintain a cover down on the punter of the weapons, okay? It's, it's difficult, it's hard to react. They can change direction a lot quicker than you can react to it. Things fall apart very quickly, okay? So how we take this play to unfold initially is that for my opponent to be close enough to hit me with their strike, okay, we may meet down on the punter, but what's actually gonna happen is we're gonna slide down each other's weapon a little bit, okay? If we're meeting just on the punter the whole time, they're not going to have been close enough to hit you, so why would you move, okay? That's, I mean, there's more to it, but that's the main supporting fact behind when we say about meeting on the punter but sliding down towards the mezzo, okay? So again, it goes back to distance, okay? They've cut in, it's just barely going to hit you. You, of course, have to react to it, and you're going to react to it because you don't get to dictate their distance. You don't know how far they're gonna step in or if they're gonna follow in behind it. You don't know how much they're gonna extend their arms. So you have to react to it. So you do, you throw up your cover, okay? And as I've said, it can be a counter cut, it can be frontale, it can be lots of different ways. Okay, let's talk about the feet a little bit. So. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about the importance of the increase. It is super important with this action, okay? I've got all the time in the world to just move my front foot offline to make the cover, okay? And what that does is it catches their cover and it catches their cut a little bit earlier, which gives me more space to operate in. So if I'm possibly Donna and I don't move the front foot, I just react to it, either counter cut or however we've discussed getting there, okay? I'm very tight, I'm very linear, okay? So I have less room to play with. I can still thrust and I would still thrust, okay? But I'm not opening them up enough to make it super reliable all of the time. By bringing the front foot offline, I'm not slowing anything down and I'm hugely opening up my opponent. I'm catching their cut a little bit early, okay? I'm giving myself a lot more space to play with on the inside. I'm starting to displace their weapon, okay? Which keeps me a lot safer and helps me guarantee that I'm gonna win the center, okay? So, again, I'll cut from posture, I don't know, but my stick has just cut in, okay? I'm coming offline and I'm basically catching that in Crusader. So if I just cheat and move myself across a little bit, I would catch it here, which means I've got all the space in the world to thrust in, okay? No problem, all right? Where the follow-on play comes in is the fact that my opponent might have been a bit quicker than I thought, a bit harder than I thought. They might have gained a little bit more distance. They have won the center line, okay? So I've done all of the same action, okay? They've cut in, I've reacted to it. Yeah, I may have done that sort of frontale hybrid. I've reacted to it, okay? But they have won the center, which means if I thrust, I've got nothing to thrust into. Their weapon is gonna push my thrust aside, okay? And they have the option to thrust at me and they will thrust at me, okay? Because it's, the point is on, they'd be stupid not to. What that means, I don't have time to mess around, okay? As soon as we land, or before we land, and I'll come on to that in a second, because this is about detail, 
as soon as we land, okay, I know I've not got the centre line. My training tells me don't even try for a thrust, it's completely futile and don't take the risk that they're gonna thrust at you in the face. So what I immediately do from here is I cut around to the other side. There's a couple of different ways to do this, okay? If I kind of do this with a bit of actual, yeah? There's a couple of different ways to do this. How we initially teach it is that we use the, the hilt coming up to push the thrust aside. Okay, so I'm completely clear of that now. I just cut straight back down the line. That's how we do it initially. How it can evolve, kind of comes down to preference. My preference is we meet in Crusada, okay? And it's, you know, it's down on the punt, that's about right, to be honest. Um, and what I tend to do is ignore it. I lift the weapon up completely and use my feet to keep me safe, and then I cut straight back down the line, okay? The weapon is basically covering that the whole time, okay? There's no, there's no risk of them sending in a thrust. You will also see um, a kind of pirouette around the top as well, where we'll meet in Crusada, okay? I will lift the weapon up and kind of come straight back down. As I say, lots of different ways to do that, okay? Um, and that in turn gives us our two plays. Now, how am I making the decision about which to do, okay? To cut around or to thrust? The principle is really important, okay? That's the reason why these two plays are first in the section okay because you would have likely heard the term number one cut okay it's not a term that Fiora uses as such um, but the number one cut is kind of applicable to lots of different weapons based martial systems if you're right-handed this action from the right shoulder is the most common most powerful fastest action you can do fastest cut you can do yeah I mean thrusts are pretty quick but we're talking about cuts so and Fury doesn't tell us explicitly that that's the case, but you'll notice if you spend any time with the manuscripts, most of the actions he's dealing with are cuts from the opponent's right shoulder. Okay, and there's a very important reason for that. And again, that's common in all, all systems and, and lots of other uh, sort of non-sword-based but weapons-based systems. So these are triggers, okay? Trigger points. What makes the decision for me as to what I do is based on how we land, where we land on the weapon, and what I can see, okay? But it has to be very, very quick, okay? There's no time to make decisions, so I'm falling back on my training. The second we have made contact, doesn't matter, doesn't matter how, what cover, what angle, what direction we've come from, the second contact is made, it becomes a reactive fight, okay? You don't have time to make decisions. And I'll come on to the idea of this being a bind, as with other systems, and working from the bind in a moment, okay? But you don't have time to make decisions. So what's going on is very simple, in my, in my view. Cut comes in, cover goes up, or counter cut goes in, however, whatever. They're open, I thrust. They're not open, yeah? I cut around. Now, it's visual and it's kinesthetic as well. It's, I'm feeling where my body is at. Because visually, if my opponent is in front of me and I'm, I can see their shoulders and I can see their body, okay, I know the lateral difference between our respective positions, okay? So if I cut in and I notice that they are slightly to my left, I can be pretty sure on the way in, I'm not going to win the center. Oh man, did I make a cock up. So um, I made a mistake and um, I had an instructor moment, a bit of a brain fart. So if my opponent is offset to my left, um, and I am cutting, to win the centre, my weapon needs to be significantly to the right of their incoming cut. So if my opponent is offset to the left, it's likely that I've won centre. Um, I'm going to blame this on being pretty tired. Um, we try and do all of our videos in one take, um, so that, uh, you know, my belief is that if we can't do this stuff in our sleep, then we have no business doing videos about it. Um, but look how tired I am. I have two young girls under two. Um, so yeah, I made a mistake, hands up. So for the next couple of minutes, just bear that in mind. If my opponent is offset to my left, and I'm covering their incoming attack, I'm likely to win the center line. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, if they've cut into me, or even if I've cut into them, I can be pretty sure that I'm not going to win the center line, okay? Which means I'm pretty much deciding on what I'm doing next on the way in, okay? So, I cut in, uh, they're off to my left, okay? I know I'm not gonna win the center, so as soon as I land, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be thrusting at me, I'm immediately cutting around, or doing another action, okay? Similarly, 
with that lateral offset. If they are slightly to my right and they cut in and I react to it, I'm pretty sure they're still gonna win the center. So I'm gonna be moving and cutting around. If we're completely square on, okay, then I'm not gonna be making the decision on the way in, I'm gonna be making the decision as soon as I land, but it still goes back to the default training, awareness of where we're positioned and knowing where my arms are, okay? So as we land, I know that my hand, my right hand, is a little bit higher than it would be if I'd have won the center. If I'd have won the center, it would be a little bit more extended. I know I've got a thrust. If we've met here and they've won the center, my hand is a little bit, you know, it's not as far forward as it would be if my point was on. So therefore, again, trigger, cut around. Yeah, because I know I haven't got the center line and so on and so forth. So there's a couple of examples, but it's, these are trigger points, okay? Similarly, I don't get to dictate how my opponents cut, how much power they've had, how much distance they've, they've gained. So then I'm falling back on my training, yeah? So if I do the same covering type action, but they've, you know, come in a bit closer and we've started to meet Metza to Metza, well then I know the plays from there, yeah? And what's giving me that is the trigger point. In this case, the trigger being, I can feel that we're Metza to Metza, or even strong to Metza in this case. I know the lateral offset, so I know who's likely to have won the center. I'm trying to give the idea, and it's an important one, of the concept around trigger points. Lots of what Fury is doing is based around triggers, okay? It's based around the position you're in, the positions your arms are in, and ultimately familiarity with those positions and familiarity with the options you can successfully employ from them, okay? So that's that. Let's talk about the bind aspect real quick, okay? So a very, very old and long-standing debate that's less of an issue today, but has been in the past uh, quite a big one is, is this a bind? Is this covering type action a place I can sit behind and feel pressure, feel what my opponent is doing, okay? The answer is no, okay? It is if you've got a huge displacement. So if I've covered right out here, okay? Let's make it as it should be. Covered right out here, then yes, because there's no threat to me, okay? And, you know, I can threaten my opponent, but that's their problem, not mine. From here, if I don't want to thrust them in the face, although I can't see why, then yeah, I've got time to have a think, have a feel, understand what's going on. If everything's worked as my opponent intended, i.e. they've cut at me, and or one center line, then the answer is absolutely not. This is not a place you can sit and make decisions, okay? You just can't. I'll show a video of how quickly these thrusts can come in now. Look, a thrust, stay, I'm thrusting through, and I'm recovering back. Okay, so that's a different play, but you can see what happens when the opponent wins the center line, how fast the thrust comes in. So you tell me, if you meet up here like this, you tell me if you've got time to sit behind that and make decisions. The answer is no, I'm afraid. Nothing I've ever experienced in 25 years of doing this has told me that I can meet in that cover and use it to generate another action, i.e., um, as you would see in other systems where they would wind off of that or um, you know, the, the cover dictates the action. It doesn't, it can't, okay? This is the thing about a combat-based system and the, what I believe that Fury was going for. In the heat of the moment, you don't strategize. It's all reactive, okay? And it's particularly important with these two plays, okay? Because if I make a cover and my opponent wins the center line and I'm trying to use that cover without moving again or without doing anything with my weapon, if I'm trying to feel pressure on in the bind to generate an action, the chances are I'm already gonna be thrust there, yeah? No, no student of ours would ever give me the opportunity to sit behind a cover like this and have a think about what's going on. Never, it would never happen. So yes, it's a different context. Yes, the parameters are slightly different, okay? Um, but, you know, it's, it's this play and plays like it from the system, they are immediate and they are, um, you know, committed, okay? Because the whole idea is that 
you don't take any risks. We're not sparring now, <laughs> okay? I don't, I don't, it's not okay that we hit each other, okay? It's never okay. So I don't take any risks, all right? Cover comes up, the center is mine, I'm gonna thrust, okay? Cover comes up, the center is theirs, I can't thrust, immediately I'm gonna cut around, okay? Those are my two actions. There's other actions, but those are the two from the, from the plays, okay? The other thing I wanted to mention, so the other thing I wanted to mention is about familiarity, okay? And I've kind of, I've said the word a couple of times. I want to talk specifically about familiarity. When you've practiced this play and all the plays a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? And you've done them in different situations, different setups for a long, long time, they become second nature, okay? Which means how you look at applying them slightly changes and evolves. And it's the same with any martial art, any martial artist, yeah? With actions like this, you can often tell the likelihood of the follow-on before you get there, okay? What I mean is, I will happily sit in posture, okay? And if my opponent cuts at me with a step, <clears throat> I will pretty much know before we land, before that trigger I've just mentioned, what is going on, okay? So I will know, you know what, halfway through the action, uh, you know, just a sense will tell me I'm probably not gonna win the center here. So what that means is, as soon as I land, I'm turning. Yeah, and you'll, I've got another video on this, so I'll quickly show that in a second. But, you know, we'll throw out, and I think, yeah, fuck that. I'm, I'm not going to win the centre, so I'm cutting around. There's a bank here. <laughs> I nearly fell into a ditch. Uh, you know, or I'll know, boom, boom, I've got the centre on the way in. Which is why, um, you know, I think I've got, I'll show another video. Which is why quite often there's absolutely no delay between incrosada and action okay because our experienced guys will have a pretty good idea before they get there if they've won the center or not okay you know haven't won the center i'm just immediately going to abandon that and cut around and try not to fall down the ditch so the last thing to mention is a little bit about preference okay Anybody that watches my videos will know I'm really big on preference. There are obvious do's and don'ts, and there are things that have more risk and less risk, but so much is about preference, and it has to be. We're all shaped differently. We have different mechanics. We, you know, it has to be the case. When I generally find this cover, I tend to find this cover a bit deeper than the manuscript, okay? And the manuscript is out here, okay? It's, the arms are kind of like this. We found it right up. I've already explained about slipping down the weapon and so on and so forth. Because I, I have a preference for a low posture, okay? I generally find this cover from coming underneath it, which means I find it actually much deeper on the weapon than the image would suggest, okay? This is martial arts, okay? There has to be some allowance for preference. As long as I am uh, being very mindful of the principle of the technique, I'm cool about preference, okay? And it, and it is so incredibly important. And probably the reason why I mention it so much is because people will watch a video and they will get incredibly hung up on very subtle preference-driven things that they don't do or they don't see elsewhere, okay? That's, martial arts are about adapting a framework for your own use on how you like to move and how you like to operate so you know if i'm coming from posture de donna which is which is how i set it up but it's not how i prefer to do it then yeah i will find a counter cut or i will slip into a frontale and if i'm out here yeah i might find it but generally speaking i'll come up and underneath it okay which means i'll generally initially make the contact the incrusada on my mezza their punta okay and then we will slide down okay that's generally how i find it so don't be afraid if you're not you know you're doing this if you're a beginning or starting off and you're not doing it exactly like i do it or how you see other people do it that's part of the journey okay the main thing is that you're sticking to the principles our students spend a lot of time practicing the first four actions of the Jocko Largo okay it's, it's a huge constituent in the two-handed use in our level two okay that's the second level in our curriculum the reason for that is that the principles that are happening where you're meeting on the weapon and what the action what actions that's dictating have to be really really ingrained okay so that when you come on to layer the rest of the system on top of those decision-making processes about where you're crossing 
it's there, it's built in. Okay, when you layer the system on top, those follow-on actions, the next plays in sequences, the, the stretto, they're accessed much more quickly because the groundwork is based on those initial plays of the of the Largo. Just to stress that point a little bit more. However I find a cover up here, I'm down on the end of the weapon, or I'm certainly down on the end of their weapon, okay, but distance tells me I've got the center line of thrust, I don't have the center line of cut around, okay? If they step and I step and we meet strong to middle, I've got plays there, yeah? If I meet Metzger to Metzger with the right foot forward, I've got plays there, okay? All of those trigger points coming from familiarization, coming from training, dictate outcomes. Because going back to the point I just made, you don't have time to go, oh, that's strong to Metzger, uh, so what are my options? Yeah, that's not, that's definitely not how this works. It's reactive. I'm up, I'm in. Yeah, I'm up, I'm in. Yeah, I'm up, no centre line, I'm cutting around. That's how fighting has to work. You, you know, to put it in a, in a framework that people can understand, watch boxing, right, or MMA, but, but yeah, boxing because it's closer to my heart, okay? Those boxers are not sending in low hooks and high uppercuts or whatever, they are not in that moment thinking, yeah, their head's open, off I go, yeah, oh, this is open, I'm coming over the top, they're not thinking like that, yeah? It's training. They know if they throw in a hook down here, and they see the opponent's arm dropping, they instinctively they know, well, their head's open, so I'm gonna come over the top. Yeah, it's instinct, it's reactive. It's exactly the same with a sword. It's exactly the same, okay? So this wasn't scripted, I was very tight for time. I think probably about 25 minutes, half an hour, so a lot of detail. But these plays are really super key to understand because they're the ones that you're going to find more often than, than most of the other plays, okay? Um, so I hope it was useful. Thanks for your time and until the next one.